I hope I did it under the right profile. I'm pretty sure I did. So, yeah. All right. So we are going to, I'm going to tie up one of those uh, dragonfly nymphs, these guys, that I had done the other day. And this was by popular demand, the one that everybody wanted me to tie tonight. So here we go. I noticed this morning that I didn't think I had any more of the micro shanks. So these are the micro shanks that I'm going to be using. They're the articulated ones. I hate these things, but I love them. This is the eight millimeter. The six millimeter ends up in the carpet um, and everywhere else it shouldn't. It's, they're, they're terrible and uh, they look so good when you use them, but they're really, really pain to kind of use. So I just go with eight millimeter and make it work for everything. Um, so I already have one of them in the vise. So I'm just going to wrap the shank on that. Now, the first part of this fly is pretty boring. It's got this FNF, um, this is the slush jelly, and it is in egg white. Nothing against FNF, but I feel like all of these have really gross names. There's one that's like called milk or something, fluorescent milk, and then another one called biscuit. I just feel like that's super wrong every time I, I go to use them. This doesn't seem like it should be allowed. The old milk biscuit. Yeah, so. All right, so I'm gonna tie, I strip some of it off so that it leaves that like weird little core there for you. And that makes it so that you can tie that in without having it super fat and bulky. Um, all right, so wrap to the front, to the eye. Now what I'm gonna do is pretend that this is like hackle, okay? So I'm going to take this kind of fluff it and then fold it. So I'm like almost palmering it. All right, so as I wrap up there, I'm not wrapping over any of the other stuff or the other um, row before it. I'm just gonna carefully and then push it back as I'm doing it. Now, the toughest part is when you're tying this off, it's gonna get in the eye there's no way around it really. It's gonna look sloppy. The plus side is, is you can't tell ever. So you can even, when you whip finish, you can even whip finish kind of back into it and catch some of it and it's not gonna screw up the fly. So that's one of the flies that I like for that purpose is that it doesn't really matter. All right, so there's section one. Super exciting. So this is just one of those, for those just joining, this is one of the eight millimeter fish skull articulated shanks. And I just put on there, um, added in some of the slush jelly chenille. I guess, I mean, yeah, it's chenille. So now what I'm gonna do, for those of you that are wondering, um, this is not a, this would probably be rated explicit if I lose one of these in the next two seconds. So just FYI, I'm going to, um, I hate doing these things so much. I'm trying not to swear in case my mother is watching because I normally, ah, yes, did it. These things suck to open up and try and put on. All right, so, and then they suck even more when you're trying to actually wedge it into a vise because then it ends up taking the two pieces of metal and like crossing them all weird and, Anyways, I'll stop bitching. Or sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> sorry, mom. <laughs> I'll stop complaining for a second here. Failed All right. Yeah, I already failed miserably. Okay. So there we go. Now, shocker, we're gonna use the rest. So I'm gonna take this same piece and I'm gonna peel it a little bit. So I leave that core, and I'm going to tie that in. It's gonna be a little bit redundant here for a second because I get to do three sections of this before it gets to really anything exciting at all. Um, I promise it ends up looking like a dragonfly in the end and not a big white thing. All right, so I'm back there. Done. Hey, it's Jake. Jake. 
Sorry, I have Justin in the background in case my phone decides to be weird and stop showing me who's actually like commenting. He's, he's my, my helpful assistant here for a minute. He's announcing people that we know that are joining. All right, so that section's done. One more and then it's done. Then it's done with the boring part. Last chance for me to end up swearing horrifically while I try and get this stupid thing in. Ugh, I hate these things so much. I don't know how guys would do it either. Thank God, I mean, my nails suck, but at least they're better than guys' nails. Um, there. All right, so. There's that one. Last section here. And you also have to watch out because where it overlaps at the front, the metal does. It loves cutting thread every time. Thanks. Um, you'll know that my nail polish I, I did about two hours ago because I had, like, as usual, part for the course, I had, like, it looked like, I don't know, it looked like I was changing the oil on something or something like that right before. It looked really bad. I've gotten a cat fight or something. I'm not sure. But it looked really bad because it was, like, a month old. It's not very, I'm, I'm the worst girl ever for that. So, last one of these. And then, all right. This fly actually doesn't take that long once you get used to it, but it, working with the shanks kind of takes some getting used to and you'll have many fails like I did before you get them right. Just these little micro ones that are so painful. Every time I vacuum under the fly tying table, you hear like the, the big, like it suck up something that was not supposed to be sucked up. And I'm like, definitely it was a micro shank or maybe 10 or maybe I threw all of them on the ground because I got really, really angry. I have no idea. So, a really crappy job on that one. Oh well, who cares? Okay, so next up, I've got all of this little butt section, his little tail on him. Okay, so now once I've got that, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna put in the my hook. And my hook is it is a gamakatsu. My favorite ones that SL12S um, short shank. So they're the heavy ones, short shank, rad hooks. I if I could use it for everything. If it went down to an 18, I'd still use it. Not that I'd fish anything with an 18 in salt water, but if I decided to. Um, all right. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just kind of wrap the shank of this hook real quick. And I'm going to slightly go down the bend a tiny bit. Okay. All right, now I'm gonna wrap back up and I'm going to put on, um, I have two options. In the past, I've done the Ciccone's um, uh, bead chain eyes. I'm not gonna do it with this one because this is a little bit of a bigger hook and it ends up making it so that it's, um, it's not gonna flip it. So we wanna make sure that we're flipping it. So I'm going to use a, I think it's the mini size of the lead dumbbells and put that on there and figure eight around the bottom, then glue the absolute crap out of it. So it still doesn't go anywhere, which I'll do. Normally I just say whatever, just do as I say, not as I do, but I'm going to be go one up on myself and do it. All right. So now I go back to the back. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I have some of the Senyos, uh, the thin wire. This is the one that's for like size six and smaller. I'm going to cut off a piece of that. Then I'm going to take a, this is the best part is I have them all over my fly tie table. So I don't really actually have to dig for a bead somewhere, a glass bead. <laughs> It doesn't say much about my cleaning habits of my fly tying table, but that's why I have it angled so you can't see that. All right. So now I'm going to take the end of this and I'm going to shove the wire through it. 
All right, so now it looks like that. And then I'm gonna take a glass bead, one of the clear highlight, or the clear iridescent uh, tires beads. And I'm gonna put that on there. And that just keeps it from fouling. But usually um, I don't do like a, a weed guard or anything to prop it up and keep it from fouling more on the size because it doesn't really matter. It's too small, it's not gonna really do anything. And it's super fluffy on the butt, so I'm not too worried. Um, so what I'm gonna do is tie that down so that the bead is right at the end of where I stop tying down my on my thread there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it all the way up to the eyes, and I'm gonna fold it back over itself. I'm gonna wrap down a little ways, cut, and then make sure you don't cut your thread with a wire because I do that a lot too, it sucks. There's a lot of swearing involved in that too. <laughs> All right, so there's the basis, base of it right there, okay? So next up, you have a few options with this. You could take dubbing and put it in a dubbing loop and get some of the, um, use like a rubber leg dubbing, one of the shaggy dub or something like that. Or you could get one of the simple little like pre-made brushes. I normally don't use these, but in this case, it's easy and I'm doing it, so suck it up and deal. <laughs> So I'm gonna tie that, this in right here, right behind the, or in front of the bead. And I'm going to do just a few wraps of it. And this, what's cool about doing something a little bit longer right here is it kind of continues the size slightly of the, of the abdomen on it. And it kind of keeps it from going, it covers up that midsection where you have the bead and that junction point. So it ends up looking pretty good. Even though it's got legs on, or like um, little micro rubber pieces in it, it doesn't, in my opinion, still look like legs. So I'm still gonna add something else. You know how um, right at the thorax, I think it's a thorax on dragonfly nymphs, they have like a super skinny, like right behind the eyes, it's super skinny. And so, um, you want to make sure that you still have that kind of waist or taper area to it right behind the eyes. So I am tying right now for the question that's up there right now, I'm, um, tying my dragonfly nymph. It's just like a game changer style dragonfly nymph. Obviously the game changer fly itself was designed by, um, Blaine Chocolate. It was not, this is not anything new. This is just, I hadn't seen a dragonfly done this way, so I decided to do it. All right. So. What I'm using then for the, the next piece all the way up to the head is gonna be this. It's the Creeper Chenille, I think it's called, from um, FNF. It's pretty awesome. It's got like super absorbent core material that's almost like a, it's almost like what you would see in like the egg veil and, and that sort of material. It's super absorbent and it sucks up water and it looks really good in the water when it's wet. So, this is a little bit more of the sloppier area. <laughs> so you kind of try and palmer a little bit, but not, it's just, it doesn't, it's not gonna work very well. And then what I do is I tie that down, okay? Now I'm gonna take this and I'm going to cut that off. Tie a little bit more, I'm gonna wrap there. Then I'm gonna whip finish. And then is the fun part. It's my favorite part. It's where I get to play Chia Pet and cut the crap, or like cut it and color it and make it look pretty. Um, the FNF, so I got that from, um, who was it did I get it from? Let me think about that. I'll figure it, I'll remember in just a minute. Um, it was, I will actually, let me, um, I'll message it to you because I do, I can't remember for the life of me, right? I'm having a brain fart on that, but I will remember and I'll let you know. Um, so now it's pretty much done except for the coloring and the cutting. So what I do now is I take it out of that and I, you want to get it like a, a flat on the top and flat on the bottom. And then you want to taper it a little bit so that it looks like a, 
well, dragonfly body. <laughs> so they kind of have a flat tail end on them. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one. The thing with this chenille is that it'll sometimes get caught on itself, so it's always good to take it and brush it out too. I'm using one of those loon dubbing picker things or brush things, it's awesome. All right, so <clears throat> now that he's all fluffed up, I'm gonna go back in again with the scissors and get a few of the chunks that I missed. All right, so now I'm gonna do the, make it so that it's nice and flat on top. And so this hook is a size six of the Gamakatsu SL12S short. I would say it in appearance, it kind of, I don't know. It looks a little bigger than that, but it's just because it's a heavier hook. Um, all right, so I love this part, but I have to stop myself or else it'll end up bald, so. Okay, so right now it's pretty good. I'll still go back and I'll cut more because that's just what I do when I get excited about it. Um, I have a few different colors of pens. So, but these guys I've got, you can use brown Sharpies, you can use Prismacolors, whatever you want. But now the fun part is, is just making it look like a dragonfly nymph, okay? So we're gonna use this green and I'm going to color Um, you want to color, obviously, this is not like elementary school, but color the base color first and then go back and do the accent stripes and whatnot. Otherwise, it will be bad. Um, you will end up with it all over your fingers. So screw the fact that I did my nails for all of you. Doesn't really matter now. I knew it would last about an hour. Hasn't done that much. <laughs> All right, so I am still just coloring away. I'm making it like a marbled olive right now. And you have to make sure that you go backwards too, which is when you end up with it all over your fingers and hands, because you want to make sure that inside and all around in that white area is going to be colored in. So now it's starting to look more like a dragonfly. But, okay. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit of a darker olive. and do a little bit more of a striping on it. All right. You could even take this if you wanted to, and you could take uh, this third section and you could tie in a little piece of foam underneath so it kicks up. And I would think that that would be a killer option for carp because it would keep that butt end kind of sticking up a little bit for them, get their attention. We don't have a ton of carp fishing over by me. Um, do in Eastern Washington, but not in Western Washington. And so I don't, it's not something that's as, we see as much or use as much. Um, you definitely should <laughs> do your nails before tying flies. It does not help. I just mess them off even more. It's like they're all covered in green now and whatever else, so. Um, now I'm gonna add a little bit of brown. Okay, and make it all marbled. So for those of you that are watching, uh, I will take this and I will go back and put it on the YouTube channel and um, it'll leave it awkwardly, just me talking to myself, it looks like, because it'll have all the commentary, but without the questions <laughs> involved. But if you want to, there'll be a link in my bio that you can go in there and, and watch this again. But that's it. Now it's pretty much done. Dragonfly Nymph. It's got a butt that'll move as we like, <laughs> as everything should. <laughs> and then um, that's about it. That's all I got. So everyone have a good night. Thanks for watching.